Hello. Right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my first diecast review in a long while. Uh, let me state right off the bat, I do apologise for being away for so so long. I mean, I really have been. It's been unfair on you lot just to be, for me, just to be going AWOL for such a long time. I mean, I have finished my exams for about a month or so now, but then sorting things out for my gap year because I'm not actually going to be going to university next year. I'll be going the year after if I get the grades and that, you know, whatever. Uh, so I've been sorting things out and NASCAR and the whole YouTube thing has really gone to the back of my mind for a while which I do apologise about do forgive me, I have been sort of paying attention to things even though it looks like I have been sort of blanking everybody but I am back at last, I've been meaning to do this for a while and I said I would and I will my first diecast review since something like May or June something silly like that it's long overdue either way and I hope you enjoy it uh, basically the, die the two diecasts on the show today or tonight rather are the two Penske Racing Nationwide cars for 2010, my only 2010 die cars so far, because obviously that's one of the reasons I've not been doing that many die cast reviews this year. I'm waiting for the new 2010 Sprint Cup cars to have the spoiler on rather than the old wing that's been gotten rid of. Is it spoiler? The, whatever the old one was on the COT, that wing thing that they got rid of. Uh, I'm waiting for the die cast to come out with the spoiler on, and they look infinitely better in my opinion, even though they don't look as good as the old cars, and I don't see why the new ones are in. Anyway, that's a debate for another day. Here are the cars in question. One of them has been causing quite a stir, or his driver has, in the Nationwide Series Racing. Sorry if this is a bit jerky, I haven't got a stand at the moment. There they are. On the right, Justin Allgaier, number 12, Verizon Wireless car. And on the left, Mr. Brad Keselowski's discount tyre tire car. And what's interesting straight off is that the Penske Racing Team are the only team right now still running factory Dodge racing or Dodge Chargers rather in NASCAR in the Sprint Cup and Nationwide because obviously Richard Petty Motorsports moved to uh, Ford last year appears to have done them some dividends um, I'll tell you what the championship year is very close uh, I'll get more into that into a, in the there start that one again uh, I'll get more into that whole discussion in this uh, garage area video I plan on doing later on but basically I'm really impressed on how close the championship is it's been blown wide open Certainly wasn't like last year where sort of it sort of cruised along and then as soon as the chase started, Jimmy Johnson won it. You know, it was sort of almost predictable. You know, but this year it's sort of a bit more of a mix. But I still believe Jimmy Johnson will jam it in the chase. Maybe that's me being sceptical. But anyway, it's been good fun this year. Uh, we've had some incidents and stuff, and uh, I've really been enjoying it actually. And um, I better get back to this review actually because I realise I'm wittering on. So here are the cars in question. Let's start first with Justin Allgaier's car. I do apologise for the lack of light on my desk. I had to move the lights around in my room. I hope you can see it all right. There you can see it. And it is a good design. See there, the Verizon. The wireless sort of red stripes to mimic the logo, the Z of the logo. The red stripes and that. And these are actually, uh, hang on a sec. Let me have a look. And these are Checker Flag Sports models. And though many people have busted on them in the past for getting things wrong. I actually like the look of these chargers. They've got them really nicely done, nice proportions. They're a little bit boxy, the 12's are a little bit boxy, but still, nice job on that. Front grille's often difficult to model. So many times I've seen them get them like off kilter, or these bits are too small or too big or whatever. Um, but they look nice, looks good on this one. Simple sort of white and red paint scheme on this one, they're covered in the Verizon wireless logos. I like the way the red stripes as well kind of go up, match up from the lights or rather the lights that they have vinyled on there and they sort of go down like that the whole sort of thing of stripes mimicking, like I say, mimicking the Z in the Verizon Wireless that looks nice, also the red wheels work really well I like the look of that so there's Justin Allgaier's car done and now the man of the moment well, if you're Carl Edwards he's the man who's not going to be on your Christmas card list this year Mr. Brad Keselowski now obviously you can tell I bought this car random error message on the computer you can tell I bought this car uh, as the new car at the start of the season rather than mid-season because it's not got a dent in the side of the door or smashed up where some guys T-boned him at Gateway obviously <laughs> or a uh, Carl Edwards sized dent in the rear bumper like that <laughs> anyway I'll discuss that incident in the garage area video and the car that Carl Edwards does have such a problem with is a very nice looking car as well Penske, similar sort of colour schemes this one sort of replaces all the red bits with black bits to closer match the discount tyre uh, logos it has on it. And again, the twos look good. Never seen it as a 22, but it looks nice like that. Same font as um, Kurt Busch and before him Rusty Wallace's old car. 
The grill on this is a little weirder. I don't really like the look of the, the grill on the front of this, but I think that's mainly because of the black running through the grill like that. You can see it there. Sort of makes it look a bit weird, as if it has some eyes. Because I, I do think cars have a face. <laughs> look, you see the eyes, mouth, like that. That's just me. But yeah, it sort of gets lost in the black at the front, but the red wheels look good on it as well. A little bit of red trim on the bottom. Looks nice, it's sort of uh, two-tone. Black along the bottom and the white at the top. And it sort of runs aching and goes smooth there. I like it when cars do that. A lot of cars do that. Have that sort of fat line along the bottom, and then it stays there where the rear bit is higher up off the ground than the bit before the rear wheel, if that makes it the real wet wheel well. And black spoiler on the back. Looks very nice. All nicely matched up in that. So yeah, a lovely pair of cars. I got these on pre-order, I remember when they came out, so I'd be guaranteed them. I'm a bit skint at the moment, but I am aware that the 2010 Sprint Cup diecasts are coming out very soon with the spoiler on, so hopefully I should be getting my hands on those very soon. And when I do, I'll give you, you'll be the first to hear about them. Well, I say you'll be the first to hear about them. If anybody else reviews them for me, then go for it. But as soon as I get them, you will hear about them as soon as possible, and you'll hear my thoughts on them as well. But now that's the end of my diecast review, my latest diecast review. My returning one, apologies if I'm a bit rusty, I haven't done this for a while. And I'll be back in a little while, hopefully, to do a garage area video and just offer my discussions on how NASCAR's going at the moment. But until then, goodbye and have a good evening, and I hope you've enjoyed the review. Hey!